Being a parent is, of course, never a cakewalk, but parenting during a pandemic, that's an entirely new set of challenges. So many of us are having to entertain and educate our children while still trying to do our jobs at the same time. It's all one big balancing act. But the burden is especially unique for parents of children with special needs. And as Devin Dwyer reports, theirs is an inspiring story of resilience on the front lines right at home. From outside the front door, a glimpse of life around the kitchen table in a pandemic. Danny is uh, medically fragile, so the, um, the, just the, <clears throat> the virus itself would be pretty devastating to him. Parents Megan Scully and Chris DeBott of Washington, D.C. are now full-time caregivers for their four-year-old son, Danny, who has a rare brain disorder, putting him at increased risk of COVID-19. One of the, the fights for us is, is, you know, keeping the front line for us here at home instead of possibly you know, having to go to the hospital. As we talk outside, Danny's two-year-old brother, Elliot, keeps that distance. His older brother, Sam, tells us he's worried. Are you afraid of the, of the disease? Uh, a little, because, like, what if Danny catches it? Like, or what if I catch it? If I catch it, I would probably have to stay in my room all day, maybe for two weeks. And like, I wouldn't get to see him at all for that long. And also, if I came out of my room and went into his room and uh, I snuggled with him, he could catch um, COVID-19 and he could um, be diagnosed and could die. It's a sobering reality affecting so many families. Rob Gorski of Ohio tells us he's overwhelmed. I'm um, a dad to uh, three autistic kids and... Uh, my oldest is medically fragile, so uh, one of the things that he has right now is a uh, compromised immune system. 20-year-old son Gavin Gorski in the middle down. shows us his pump for gene infusions to boost his immunity. It's pretty stressful worrying about trying to keep him healthy and uh, safe by not exposing him to anything, really. The Gorskis haven't left their Ohio home in three weeks, testing their patience with each other and communication skills. Father Rob invited us to join a family conversation. We're sticking together. We're doing what we have to do to protect your brother. Is there any message that you guys just want to tell people yes. about? Always try and find ways to stay relaxed and stay calm. Sleep. That's important. We'll all sleep. Stick with your parents. Like, we stick with our dad, and he's the best dad we could ever have. <laughs> and if you see him right now, he's blushing. It's the love and laughter that many parents say is keeping them going. Boo! <laughs> Girlfriend. Ten-year-old Mariah Winchell, who has autism and Down syndrome, gave us a tour of her quarantine life at home near Boston. Do you want to, let's go show your schedule. Her parents posting a daily schedule to keep learning on track. Word of the day yesterday was bacteria. Mom Melissa behind the camera showing us the science experiments growing yeast by the board games. The living room now home to Mariah's cardboard rocket ship and sentence diagrams. How concerned are you that her development, her socialization is going to be set back in a big way? I'm, I'm really concerned. That new normal coming without many of the usual supports, those home health aides, therapists, coaches, teachers, and most of all, routines. Danny DeBot was just beginning to learn how to communicate when the pandemic closed his school. We are homeschooling a second grader and we are trying to get Danny's therapies in um, as, to the best that we can, but we just cannot replicate what they can do at school. And you're holding down two full-time jobs right. at the same time. Yes, yes. Jeremiah, how are you dealing with this being at home? I'm good. You're good. Do you miss your friends? Yeah. Yeah. Um, he definitely misses his friends. Single mother Opal Foster of Southern Maryland worries about the impact of isolation on her son Jeremiah, who has Down syndrome. There's a lot of things that, um, that they're used to in their regular routine that they're not going to be getting. We're working on kind of getting a Zoom or Skype meeting together so that you guys can see each other. And after losing her job at a printing company last month, Foster now wonders whether they'll stay financially afloat. We just don't know how long this is going to last. I mean, uh... I would love to say that um, everything will go back to normal tomorrow and we just snap our fingers and everything will be back just the way that we um, that it was. But 
It won't. So we're ending the three hour shift here. I'm switching off. Mariah and I wrote a story today. Melissa Winchell, like so many parents now, toggling between daycare and her day job. A full time university professor still lecturing, grading papers, and advising hundreds of students, among them Mariah, who's still struggling to understand the loss of normalcy. The grief almost feels fresh to them every day, almost like they're re-experiencing it all over for the first time. So we're having a lot of, you know, just daily crying. How have you explained to her what a pandemic is? I taught her the word coronavirus. She knows the word COVID-19. It's to the point now that she calls it stupid coronavirus. <laughs> so, you know, when she says, oh, why can't I see therapist so-and-so today? I say, oh, you know why? And she says, oh, stupid coronavirus. <laughs> the stress, many parents tell us, can seem unending. The lack of adult contact is 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 pretty challenging. Um, I love my kids, and if I had to be on lockdown with anybody, and it's my kids, so I'm, I'm glad I'm, I have them. But uh, it does it, it does sort of take its toll. When do you get a break? No, <laughs> I, I don't even know what that word means. I guess I don't I don't think so much about how to get through it. I just I, I just know that like my kids are relying on me, and I have to do whatever I have to do. I am on the couch for the second time since noontime today because I am just so tired. Often exhausted, but still resilient. I guess we're, we're trying to make sense of this, trying to keep a positive mm -hmm. attitude with me. Jeremiah is always a beacon of sunshine as it, as it is anyway. It may not be pretty and it may not be joyous and it, it may not be how you want to get through something, but you'll get through it. And there is, uh, there is something on the other side. Reminding all of us there's light at the end of the tunnel and in those we love. I think this sense that nothing is permanent, um, that life's not a given, uh, and that life's so fragile. Uh, that's, I think, what disabled families know. And I think um, that's the wisdom that we're bringing into the experience of quarantine and into COVID. Life is so fragile indeed. Our thanks to Devin for that look at some remarkable families. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.